and then go from homogeneous, we quickly would talk a little bit about uh, heterogeneous nucleation, which means what? The precipitate occur not randomly, uniformly, but at a specific uh, location. Specific, quite often we call defect sites. Whether it's green boundary, whether it's gas bubble or surface, it's compared with bulk, perfect crystal, they are defect site. And defect site, as we learned earlier, whether it's green boundary or dislocation, they all have what? Excess energy. And what we learned as we did before is if the nucleation happens in those specific defect sites, quite often they may lead to removal or partial removal of the defect and leads to the read, release of energy. I have a defect, I have a green boundary that has excess green boundary energy. But if my new precipitate form right at the green boundary, in that formation process, I'm at least eliminating what? A little bit of the green boundary. That release of the excess energy associated with the defect, whether it's dislocation, whether it's green boundary, would help what? Lower the barrier for nucleation, which is similar as what we dealt before for solidification. And we are going to write delta G, the free energy change for so-called nucleation process, is several terms. V, this is volume term times driving force minus delta G as for what? Strain, volume means fit strain energy. And then I have a barrier due to added interfacial energy. But I'm also helped, negative, I'm helped by what? D4 certain types of defects. Make sense? Because whether I'm eliminating a part of a green boundary or I'm eliminating part of a dislocation, I'm releasing some energy associated with the so-called defect. That is helping me. Negative sign. Okay? And then the, the simplest one or most common one would be something like this. Alpha, alpha in between I have Beta, which one is our precipitate? Beta is occurring well in the two green boundary, right? And then we said, as we dealt with before earlier, for let's say on the, the balance of force, we have this. The gamma alpha alpha is trying to pull which way? Gamma alpha alpha, between alpha and alpha is trying to pull which way? Towards left. Well, the gamma alpha beta is trying to pull it towards right, and this is our balance of kind of force equation. Make sense? And the determine, depending on this ratio, we would have different uh, so-called writing angle. Okay? And then, the energy change process. As we said, the energy change process would be assuming neglecting the string energy. That would be the volume term plus we are creating what? Interface between alpha and beta, but at the same time we are eliminating what? Green boundary between alpha and alpha. This is helping us. And uh, the critical size, as we dealt before, we can still get the critical size. It's as if it's the same, as it's homogeneous, making simple assumptions. Okay, and then we can also get uh, similar to solidification, get the ratio between heterogeneous versus homogeneous. Remember, we earlier we treated as the so-called sphere cap. Sphere cap. With this ratio is just the sphere cap volume divided by the total volume. Sphere cap volume divided by total volume, which is a function of theta. What is that theta? Kind of quote unquote. Uh, Writing angle. Make sense? That's similar to what we dealt with before. Okay? And uh, if we go further for green boundary, we have two green boundary. It would reduce. If we nuclear at two green boundary, it uh, eliminate that part of boundary, reduce the barrier. And sometimes people may find uh, the nucleation may happen at three green so called edge. Three green come together, 
or even four green come together in a corner, and all those would lead to the reduction of the barrier. And as a result, we would have this plot. We're plotting the relative ratio of heat row nucleation means nucleation at a specific site versus homogeneous with respect to cosine theta, which is essentially that angle, right? Wedding angle. What we see is for a same wedding angle, for the same relationship between the host material and the new phase, the interfacial energy, which one is lowest in barrier? For the same cosine theta, which one is lowest? So called the green corner is lowest. Then, so called the green add, three green come together. Then, green boundary. Make sense? And then, of course, that will be the uh, homogeneous, much higher. This is what uh, we got. For the same vetting properties, same interfacial energy situation, the precipitate would, well would it appear from energy point of view? It wants to appear in the corner and then in the edge and then in the green boundary. Okay? The matching of the certain crystal plane would lead to further reduction in the system energy. It's the same, we can say, for surface energy and inclusion. Similarly, we can say about dislocation. The precipitate may also occur at certain so-called dislocation, a specific defect site. It helps release the strain energy and it lowers the barrier. And it also happens, may happen at a vacancy site. We can see means a missing atom, the precipitate may happen there. It also helps the diffusion rate. So net net, net net, the overall nucleation rate for heterogeneous nucleation is determined by two factors. We have all these types of defects. Homogeneous site is the perfect one. We can see. Dislocation, stacking fault, or green boundary, or free surface. We have all these types of defects. And then, from kind of like a nucleation barrier types of things, the free surface or green boundary would help. If we nucleate at a green free surface or green boundary, it would help to lower the barrier the most. On the other hand, if you just nuclear at uh, vacancy, you don't have much a release of that excess energy. On the other hand, let me ask you this. What's the probability of finding free surface versus vacancy? Which one is higher probability? Free surface or vacancy has higher probability? Quite off, no, it's actually the vacancy. If you think how many atoms are located at the very surface versus how many atoms are vacancy, it's much lower, much, much lower. As a result, the, prob the probability decrease, the concentration decrease. You have the most dis vacancy followed by, okay, dislocation, followed by green boundary followed by over many, many atoms, you can find the green, so-called green boundary, followed by many, many, many more material, you can find free surface. The probability of density decrease. So it's kind of like the overall nucleation rate would be determined by these two factors, the probability of that site versus the energy for that site. As a result, this so-called N4 nucleation rate heterogeneous would be all these terms time together. CD is what? The so-called de facto C4 concentration or density. This data GM is probability of overcoming the migration or diffusion barrier. This term, data G star exponential term is probability of overcoming this barrier. 
for nucleation. So if we assume similarly between homogeneous and uh, heterogeneous, assuming the similar diffusion barrier, then but the, the nucleation rate goes to heterogeneous versus homogeneous would be determined by the concentration term times the difference, exponential term of the difference of overcoming, the difference of overcoming the barrier. Okay? So I 